Hi everybody, Tracy Brown here. I was in the process of uploading another video and I had just this pot, thought popped through my mind is that I haven't talked too much about my history as an athlete. Um, many people might not know that about me. I just, I realize I don't talk about it. Um, and I'm feeling that maybe that's important for y'all to hear about the transition from being an athlete growing up to Honestly, some of that got really parlayed into my difficulties with food and body and then how I made peace with that. And then now as an almost 40-something, um, what's that new relationship look like? And I've had lots of ups and downs. And in fact, uh, I've been always pretty transparent that movement has been more difficult than for me than food in terms of like finding that right groove about what feels good, um, what feels healthy, quote-unquote. And finding activities I like to do, I'm still working on that. Um, because what was once working for me really well um, isn't working so much. So, um, And some of that's for um, like principal reasons. Um, and some of that's for just logistical stuff. And I think we all struggle with that. So that's a great conversation to have. Um, excuse me. And I want to also talk to those of you who um, you know never felt like you were the athlete. Um, and I think that's hard, and I always felt a lot of compassion for the, the kids that were um, picked last. I hated that, so whenever I remember being like, um, and it doesn't always maybe make the team, um, you know, maybe have the best players in it, but I always felt bad for the people that were always chosen last. And I think that was fair because, of one, um, there's a lot of shame involved in that. But I also recognize that like, we all have different strengths as well. We're not always all going to be faster. I certainly wish that I had more organizational skills. And um, I do have a little bit of artistic talent, but not much. So I always like, oh, my, man, I wish I could like do art or whatever it is. And um, I'm not being stereotypical here. I'm just saying that like um, we all have our own strengths. But I still think that all bodies... Um, like movement and it's just that a lot of us haven't found that right again that right groove and we didn't get the opportunities as kids um because of you know again i mean i grew up in a place where there were only two sports <laughs> that's it basketball and either baseball or softball and so if you weren't interested in those two sports or not that um adept at those you really didn't get a chance to get like easy access um physical activity and then we had pe which um, where I grew up in Illinois, we actually had PE every day was required, which was pretty cool. Um, I mean, it wasn't, I look back thinking how cool that was to have a physical brain break, even though at the time, sometimes I thought it was totally lame, you know, and didn't want to change clothes and all the stuff. So, um, anyway, um, in, in fact, a, you know, a lot of times there were more opportunities for people in PE, at least where I grew up, to have a chance to learn to find something they might like. So I'm grateful for that. But I know not every school is like that, and, um, you know, I certainly know that now that even, you know, we, um, I see that with my daughter's school. She gets PE, but not every day. It's every couple of days, which is better nothing, but that's good. But anyway, so let's start with, like, my history. So I grew up from third grade up and through the end of col uh, high school playing softball, and I was a, I was a good softball player, an athlete. Um, my efforts to go on past high school were thwarted because of my eating disorder, so I've had to obviously work on that and make peace with that, and I'm, I'm good with that. Um, and I played basketball from fifth grade until end of high school, um, and again, was pretty decent. Um, but mostly what sports taught me, for me, why it was so important, was here was a place as a very sensitive, um, honestly loving person to be able to like be a little bit more assertive and even aggressive and it be acceptable which is really interesting um and for not those activities I think it would have been even harder for me to um be in my body and be expressive um and I move my body like this because it really helped me come out of like being as people pleasing and I certainly was very people pleasing but sports were a place where it was acceptable to um it just be about your performance, especially the, the sports I did. It really wasn't about like my sports, like what you look like. It was about like, well, you know, how, how do you, how can you do? And that was a refreshing thing for me. Um, you know, being a female and, um, you know, there's just a lot of pressure to like, you know, being sweet and nice and kind and, and looking pretty or looking small or whatever was important. Um, even if it's not directly um, verbalized to you, 
Um, I knew the rules, quote unquote, and it was a place where I could get dirty and be aggressive and um, not even like somebody. It was totally fine. It was great. Um, and also what I really hold special to my heart was um, this was a place where I learned advocacy um, for um, not, it was just a greater cause than myself. Um, you know, I went to a place where um, definitely boys and girls sports, it was clear what was more valued. Um, and my dad and mom and another um, schoolmate's parents you know, got together and decided that they had enough of seeing their daughters, their daughter was on the same teams as I was, having their daughter's equipment be in bad shape and having um, a less adequate field than the boys did. Um, and so they did something about it and um, um, basically, you know, they got a lawyer and figured out like how we're going to change this, guys, because you don't want to get sued. That's no fun. And so things started to change. And from that, I felt like immense confidence that I had this um, vehicle, which was sports, to say, hey, it, you know, we're, none of us are out here making money. This is just about like play and moving our bodies. And just because we're female doesn't mean that um, you know we have you know should be treated less than for trying to do it. So it was it was an amazing amazing opportunity. And so that's why I look upon my sports years very fondly, just from the emotional aspect. But you know physically, it taught you know it, moving your body actually teaches you how much you you could be capable of. And you know I say this all very very gently because I'm not one of those um, Nike can um, you know just do it kind of people. And there's some level of sports that that's what that's about is like, okay, here's, here's the metric, here's the goal. And we train for it and we push toward it and you to get it. So it's, it's a great for if you have something you want to do better. Like for me, I was so short, not a great, you know, free throw shooter. So I practice a lot so I can make free throws in the game if I got foul because that helped my team. Um, so I practice a lot and it was one of those places of like a greater goal and greater good. And that was awesome. And just, you know, feel accomplished. So I learned those things. And I learned to push myself physically, which was good and later on bad. <laughs> because as an athlete, you do a lot of conditioning and, and pushing yourself to be, you know, stronger or faster. Um, past sometimes what feels sometimes to the point of painful. And, some, and you know, that's where as kids aren't very good at gauging if we're people pleasers, how much is too much. So um, I had a hard time with that, obviously, because I was a kind of a perfectionist and a people pleaser and I wanted to show them that I was tough and that I was good enough and um and again not all, all athletes struggle with this but that wasn't my thing so anyway it, that made that really difficult when I got into using exercise as a way to change my body because I knew how to push myself past the point of exhaustion because of those years in sports so um, what I want to say to that is that if you're listening to this and you're just like that that is your growth edge of learning what's enough. And so one of the things I had to learn how to do when I started making peace with uh, movement was one, getting really, really clear about do I even want to do this activity? Two, if I did, and, and it's hard because you can get emotional benefit from moving your body, like even taking a walk or a jog or a run, physically that usually feels good unless it doesn't. And that's where your job, my job back in the day was to learn do I really want to be doing this today? And if I do, what's the right pace? Again, because I'm not trying to get a scholarship. I'm not making money from this. I just want to be in my body and feel strong or flexible or relaxed or more peaceful or whatever the motive emotionally is. Um, and I really honestly don't use even movement as a health goal. I, I know that like that's what's recommended like if you want to like help your cholesterol or your blood sugar to be more stable the best thing you can ever do probably is have a regular movement practice i'll be honest though that doesn't super motivate me <laughs> um i have to um man feel like i'm getting some intrin intrinsic need met some like a really deep core thing and i'm all in i'm ready to do it so whether that's walking jogging lifting weights i don't know doing something else more intense or less intense swimming whatever um, it has to be kind of a really inner motive kind of thing. Um, so to switch gears, for those of you who aren't as, um, you know, acclimated to moving your bodies, maybe you, um, you know, were the kid that were, that wasn't picked often, didn't play sports, didn't find something you love to do when you were younger. Um, you know, I really would love to, to honor the fact that like, again, all bodies love 
for something. You know, there's something that, you know, will um, bring us those intrinsic things like feeling good. But I don't want you, I want us all to be careful of using the metric of like, I'm going to be super fit and then I can be accomplished. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with setting a goal of like, I want to run a 5K. Great. Um, but it can get really sticky when you have a history of food stuff or trying to change your body with um, exercise is that, you know, guilt starts to creep in when you want to take a day off or you don't want to do something. And so the motive has got to continue to be really clean and really clear about what feels good to you. And it doesn't have to be something in a gym. It doesn't have to be typical movement. I was talking to a client the other day, and we, you know, she really does have that stickiness around, like, I, it has to be this many days and this much time. And um, I was just telling her, like, hey, let's look in your day or in your week where you actually already do things um, and make that count because we tend to do that all or nothing thing or um, no pain, no gain kind of thing, which is the Nike just do it kind of thing. Um, that we all have been really exposed to. And I'm not saying like strenuous activity is totally bad. It's just that not all the time we want to do that. Or we set up to where that's the expectation every single time we want to go to move our body. So I would say start to, to check yourself. So if you want to get up and jog and if you, you want to go more intense, do it. But then you might have the next day where you need to listen to your body, be more slow or just do more stretching or something different or... Um, have intervals or whatever it is versus like thinking that what you did the day the day before is something you always have to beat. Um, that's not actually what um, a, a way of moving that's going to, um, you know, build up long-term stamina and, and um, fitness and all those kind of things. It's like if you push yourself past the point where it's it diminishing returns, um, then we miss the boat. So... And then definitely I would say one last thing is that when you are trying to learn what you like, um, think back to play. Think back to what you would love to have done as a kid, but you didn't have the opportunity. Um, hula hoop, swimming. If you're having trouble being more fully out there and present because you feel like that your, your weight is holding you back, I would say start to get around those activities first. So if you want to swim, go to a place where people swim and watch them swim and see the all different kinds of body sizes and all different kinds of suits and see like, oh, like that's not holding them back, so what makes me any different? And so I say to people in all shapes and sizes of bodies, but that's really important. So I think I want to talk about this more again. Um, so look out for another video around like um, getting your motives kind of clear about what kind of activity you want to do. And, and for now, um, start thinking about like, what would I love to do if it wasn't attached to weight loss or changing my body? Um, if I don't want to move right now, what's that about? And it could be for a really good reason. You might feel just super uncomfortable in your body or have pain. And so give yourself a break for that, but also honor, like, if there's a split, like, I want to move because I can feel it, but I also don't know what to do. Start to, like, investigate that. And I would love to hear questions or comments about how I could help with that further. Um, you know, because in the next year or two, my goal really is for you all to have really quick, accessible little ways to address, like, pieces of things that you might be struggling with so um because i have bigger longer courses i have my one-on-one -on -one work but i really also want to like have a little burst of like here's something for a week or three weeks or six weeks and i want to hear your your thoughts about like what would you love to like have quick you know a um, little spot treatment basically for different things that you're struggling with and i want to provide that for you so let me know i'd love to hear below in the comments or you can email me and um Till now, hope you find some activity you love, and if you don't, hang tight um, and start looking for your personal motive to move. All right, thank you so much. Take care.